Morning Digital Photo. Uh, we're wrapping up our week on the elements of shape, and we're going to be doing some really cool creative shape collages today using Photopea or Photoshop. So as you can see on my screen, this work um, is based on the work of a visual artist named Vaccine. And what Vaccine does is he cuts up parts of different photographs uh, in software like Photoshop and then rearranges them with bright colors and interesting textures that they find. Um, and they make these really cool kind of cubist um, abstract collage portraits. So I think it's a great opportunity for us to practice some of the things we've learned about shape this week and to use some of the shape tools that are in Photopea. So in order to do this, we're gonna need a couple things. We're definitely gonna need some images of faces. Now, you could use some of the portraits that you took already for your selfie project if you've got some clear images of your face that you could use, um, or if you've got somebody home with you today and they're willing to be your model for this one, you can snap off some good quality, well-lit portraits of their face. You know, look for pieces like the eyes, the mouths, the nose, the ears, and just snap off some quick pictures that you can use. We're also gonna need lots of textures. So interesting textures like fabrics or patterns or different surfaces. And for that, I've got something to help you out. Um, I'm shared with you on Google Classroom, my very own texture library. And this is something that I've been building up over the years as I've taught these classes. Anytime I find good high quality photos of different surfaces and materials, I save them into these folders in my Google Drive to use in my designs. So I've got all kinds of cool stuff in here. Um, in this folder called Surface Textures, it's just high quality photos of different surfaces, metals, woods, gold, brick, uh, rusty metal, uh, cracked pavement. So lots of interesting textures that would be cool to kind of cut up and combine in your projects. There's also a whole uh, category of rusty surfaces, of different types of paper, of inks, of burnt paper, um, all kinds of stuff that you can use in your designs. And I'm sharing this folder with you now so that you can go back and use it over and over again as we go through the semester, because you'll want to use images like this in probably more than one uh, design. So I'm going to download a couple of these um, to use for my design. I know I've got some down here that look like graffitied walls that I think are kind of cool. So I'm going to come all the way down. There's one of them. And I'm just going to right click and download it. Um, here's another one. I like that one. I'm going to right click and download. Uh, I think I want some, some surface textures like metal. So I'm going to grab some of those. And I think I also want some wood grain texture. So I know up at the top, I had some like old battered wood here. This is kind of nice. I'm gonna download that one as well. So all of these are gonna go into my downloads folder. Remember, if you're working in the CAD server, you wanna be downloading these in the CAD server. If you're on your own computer, you can download them anywhere you want. The other thing I'm gonna need is um, some pictures. So of faces. So I've got a couple here that I want to use. I'm going to download these. These are all taken by different students. Um, so let me save this to my desktop. Uh, oh, I've already got it in my downloads. Duh. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to jump over into Photopea. Okay. So in Photopea, I'm going to open up a new project. And this is a photo. So I'm going to choose photo here. And then I'm gonna pick um, kind of a standard size. Typical standard size of photos would be like a five by seven inch or an eight by 10 inch. Um, let's just do an eight by 10 here. I'm gonna pick inches and I'm gonna do width of, actually, you know what? I wanna do a square format because I wanna share this on Instagram. So I'm gonna do a 10 by 10 and I'm gonna turn my DPI or my resolution up to 300. Okay, so I've got a 10 by 10, 300 white background, and I'm going to call this Roper Zach um, Abstract Shape Collage. Okay, and then let's go ahead and create it. Okay, now it's time for me to upload those images that I was going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and do open, and I'll go to my downloads folder where I just downloaded those files, and I've got four of them here that I'm going to open up. And you see they're all going to open up in new tabs, which is great. Uh, and then I got to start off with uh, my photo image. So let's see, I have that over here in my downloads already. So I'm just going to drag one of these guys in and drop it 
in there. Great. Okay. So time to cut it up. And we know that in Photopea and Photoshop, we have a couple different selection tools that we can use to cut out shapes. Since we are focused on shapes this week, I think it'd be a good idea to actually cut these out in geometric shapes. So I want to show you how you can do that. In both programs, you have a shape tool. And if you hold down on it, you've got rectangles, ellipses, lines, and custom shapes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rectangle shape. And up along the top, you can see it gives me some options for it. I want it to be no fill, no stroke. This is basically going to be an invisible shape that I'm going to use here. And I'm going to draw a perfect square by holding down shift and dragging out that tool. Okay. Now, as soon as I do that, you see it pops up on its very own shape layer. And that means you can move it around and it's not going to affect your photo underneath. You can even rotate it. Like, I think I kind of want a diamond shape for this. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'll stick with a square, actually. That works pretty good. So I'm going to put a little square right over this part of my photo. And I want to use that as a mask on the image. So check this out. If you come over to your layers and you go to the little thumbnail image, and press control click, it selects whatever shape is on that layer, okay? Then if I jump down to the photo layer and I click make mask, it's gonna cut it out in that shape, watch. So it's automatically cut out my photo in that geometric shape and created a mask for it. And we know how masks work from our other project. So now I'm gonna um, move this around and drag it over to my abstract shape collage file. And maybe I'll put it kind of over here, okay? I should also pick a nice bright color for the backdrop for this because you notice that all of these images have really bright either neons or primary colors to it. So let's go to the paint bucket tool, which is underneath the gradient tool here. I'll click that. Uh, I'm going to pick a color, and I like uh, kind of a neon green, so I'm going to pick a bright green here. And then I'm just going to click on the background layer and fill it in. Cool. Okay, now let's go get some textures as well. I don't want that background layer to move on me, so I'm going to click the padlock to lock it in place. Now I'm going to go do the same thing, but I'm going to get some different textures here, and I'm going to experiment with shapes. For example, if I take the polygon lasso tool from up here, I can make some geometrics. I'm going to try to do a triangle here. So I'm going to click once, twice, three times, and then back to the beginning. Okay, there's my shape. Uh, and then I want this to become a mask. So I'm going to go down to my add mask layer. And boom, it cuts it out in that geometric mask. And now I can take my move tool and I can drag this up and drop it into my collage. Okay. Once it's there, I have a lot of options for what I can do with it. Um, remember, I can go to edit, free transform. I can scale it up to make it bigger. I can rotate it by putting my mouse out to the outside. So I'm going to actually tilt this at like a 45 degree angle and kind of tuck it in. Let's see, I want it to be straight on top. Let me do that. Looks pretty good. Okay. And then press enter to set that transformation. Okay. We're going to continue to do this with all of our different textures. So let's go try some other shapes. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. And with the ellipse tool, I can make ovals and circles. If you just pull on it, you're going to get an oval. If you hold down alt while you do it and shift, alt and shift together, you get a perfect circle. Okay, so I'm going to grab a perfect circle shape. And then again, I'm going to control click on its thumbnail, control click, go down to the photo and click make mask. Drag this up, and drop it into my collage. Awesome, this is coming together. Okay. Let's grab a couple more. Now this one I'm going to do more free form. I'm going to take just the regular lasso tool. And I'm going to just get a little bit wacky here and kind of wiggle around, make this kind of jelly bean peanut shape like that. And then click make mask. And this piece is now ready to bring over. 
and drop into my collage over here. Okay. And again, I can always transform this. If you're not really happy with the layout, you can throw in some different designs here. Okay. So I think it'd be cool if I mix this up with a couple different photos. I might go get my other um, black and white portrait over here, this guy. And let's see if I can take the rectangle tool and I'm just going to grab a slice of this one. Actually, maybe I'll just get the mouth here. Let's take the marquee rectangle and I'm just going to grab, go. grab the mouth and then I'll do uh, make mask and then take my move tool and go drop it into my collage. And I can put this over here. Yeah, I like how that's coming together. Okay. So overall, what you want to do is just combine different shapes, different patterns. Um, you've got lots of different tools and lots of different patterns to pick from. If you find like geometric patterns that you want to use instead of the ones that are in my library, absolutely go ahead. You can even mix up some paintbrush strokes in there if you want and have some like cool splatters and stuff. I know that in my surface textures, one of the folders that I have here is paint tossing, right? When I open this up, I've got these photos of like bright colors being thrown across the, the page. Let's actually see how one of these would look. I'm going to download this real quick and then I'll come over into Photopea and file open. There it is. Okay. And since this one's on a white background, when I bring it in, it's going to have that white background to it. But remember, we can actually get rid of backgrounds by changing the layer mode over here. If we go to normal and I want to get rid of a white one, I can click multiply. All the white disappears and all that gets left behind is the darker parts of that image. So I can throw this in there and get that cool paint effect over it. I'm going to take all the layers that are on my design right now Let's get all these guys here. So I'm holding down shift and grabbing all the layers. I can move them around and recenter them in my photo. Okay. One last trick. If you want to create some depth in your design, you can actually add a drop shadow to these individual shape layers. So check this. If I go to this graffiti layer, right, and I right click it, I can go to blending options. And one of my blending options is drop shadow. I'm going to turn this on and you see how to add it a little shadow behind that layer. I can change the direction of the shadow by moving this little click wheel around. I can change the distance of the shadow by pulling on the distance slider and I can change the spread or the size of it using this. So by adding some drop shadows to these different layers, let me do one more right click blending options, drop shadow. You see how all of a sudden my collage is really coming alive. It looks like it's jumping off the page at us and that's going to create a great effect. When you're all done with your collage, you're going to, of course, go to file, export as JPEG. If you're in Photoshop, you can just do file, save as JPEG. But in Photopea, export as JPEG. And then we're just going to hit save and it'll drop down into our downloads and we can share it in a gallery on the class. So I hope you guys have fun with this one. It's a fast activity. We're actually gonna do it in class today uh, and we'll wrap up our unit on shape and photography. Great, see you guys later.